So it's been quite a while since I've done an album review, so I thought I'd come back with something that's pretty fresh and exciting. And I thought with Bohemian Rhapsody being a hot topic at the minute, let's do a Queen one. <laughs> Hello and yes, welcome back to another video guys. Now very excited today. We're gonna to be doing a Queen review I've only ever done one Queen review and it's very rare I do Queen videos because Admittedly, I don't know that much. I don't compared to some people. I know very little about Queen um, And I'm not the biggest Queen fan even though it may look like I'm in the background um, I, A lot of these come from my dad and the Queen records are very easy to pick up here in the UK I like them a lot. Queen are a very good band, but I'm not a massive die-hard fan. So even though I'm going to be reviewing one of their albums today, their first one, um, I know some people will have a lot more to say on this album and not everyone's going to agree with my opinion on this album. So this is just my opinion guys, it's just a little quick review just to go over the songs of what I think of them and I've got, I've got, I've gathered um, some information on it as well and I've, I know a bit about this album. So anyway, I've, I've, I've yeah. We'll take that all into consideration. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, I'm going to do the usual in this video. Um, we're going to go over a bit of information on the album. We're going to go over each song individually. Mark each song individually out of 10. Um, show you my copy of the vinyl record. Mark the artwork for the album out of 10. Take all of the scores given. Divide them by the total number of scores given. And that will give us an overall marking for this album out of 10. So nevertheless, Queen. This was their first album. It's self-titled, Queen. Um, released on 13th of July 1973. It hit number 24 in the UK and number 83 in the US. So Queen had been playing in a college circuit um, and clubs in London um, pretty much for a couple of years prior to this. Um, you know, they were, they um, Freddie was invited to join the band after they heard him sing and they were going around doing lots of gigs. Um, after making some demos, um, Barry and Norman Sheffield signed them to a record label. So they were finally able to get in the studio and make this album. It was a very quick thing, I believe. It was very heat at the moment. Um, but they got in the studio and recorded these songs. A lot of these songs they were already doing in clubs around London and whatnot. Um, a lot of this was songs that they'd been wanting to get out to the public for a while and get in the studio and make. So I think they were very excited to do that. And they experimented a lot in the studio on this album. Um, I, I, in fact, I think the producers were actually quite worried when um, some of the sounds they were making, when, when they heard some of the sounds they were making. But nevertheless, Freddie Mercury was always someone who was um, very dominant in he knew what he wanted and he wanted to get his way. Um, and that is not a bad thing at all because he made some very incredible and unique sounds on this album. And then especially A Night of the Opera, which I've got just tucked up away up there. Um, and yeah, it, he made some of the most iconic, weird, but iconic sounds in songs ever. I mean, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody, it is a masterful song. Uh, but of course, this is a few years prior to that. We still had a ways to go before we get there. Uh, but nevertheless, this album has quite a few songs on. This has um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten songs on. Even though a couple of them are quite short, but then it's made up with, with a couple of them being quite long. So let's get started. So the opening track is Keep Yourself Alive, which I think is probably the most popular track to come off this album. And it was written by Brian May. And the lyrics are about May thinking of what the band was like before Freddie came into it. And I think it's just generally Keep Yourself Alive. It's about keeping the band... He, he was singing like keeping the band going. And of course, when Freddie came into the band, it was a new breed of life for the band. Obviously, they went from being your generic... Well, I won't say generic, because obviously um, Brian May's a great guitarist, Roger Taylor's a fantastic drummer, and, you know, so on. It's um, There was talent already there, definitely, but they went from performing and doing generic kind of stuff, and Freddie come in and he added this awesome set of vocals over the top, and it just made the band elevate to new heights um, in terms of their performance skills, I think. Um, but anyway, so Freddie joins, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's kind of what this song's about. Um, and it, it has a very cool guitar riff um, running throughout the song. Um, amazing vocals from Freddie as per usual. It's very rare. Freddie gives weak per vocal performances. Um, I don't think I've ever hear, heard him give weak vocal performances 
Um, weaker ones for him, maybe, because there's a couple on here where his vocals dip a bit, but compared to a lot of other singers that are about, they're still fantastic. They're just weaker ones for Freddie. But anyway, on this song, he does sound fantastic, so <laughs> I'm not saying that here. Um, and then Roger has an incredible drum um, solo near the end, which I love. One of his best, actually, throughout the whole band's career. Um, and it's really cool, because this song gives every band member a moment to shine. Obviously, Freddie, uh, there's some cool bass riffs in there as well. Uh, Brian May does, uh, of course, great guitar work throughout the song. So this is kind of a fantastic opener for their first album. It really just shows what each member of the band is capable of. Um, I'm going to give this song an 8 out of 10. I think it's very good. Then we've got Doing Alright, which is um, also written by Brian May. Um, and Tim Staffel, who I'm not sure who he is. I'm sure someone will let me know in the comments below. Um, but it's one of the few songs... Not on this album, I, I, you just have throughout a band's entire career that Brian May actually done piano on, because Freddie done most of the piano work. Um, so that's pretty cool, um, and the piano work is good on it. It's, um, it's a nice, it's a slower song, which is much needed after Keep Yourself Alive, I think. Um, really nice vocals. I love it when they, hit, they sing the line, doing alright. The band's vocals all blend off each other so well. Um, and yeah, the acoustic parts, there's an acoustic moment in it which I really like as well. Um, I'm going to give this song a 7 out of 10. Very good song. And then we got Great King Rat, which is written by Freddie. And this is quite a long song, this one. This is one, there's there's a couple songs which are long. This is the one on side one, which uh, kind of goes up, goes on for a little bit. And I think it is a tad too long. I really think they could have cut this one down a little bit. But nevertheless, you know, it's still a good song. Um, and this is where Freddie's vocals, I think, dip a bit. They're still very good. I don't want to sound negative about Freddie's vocals, because you just can't do that. He's one of the best singers ever. Um, I just think they dip a bit compared to other songs. His vocals are still very good. Very good. Um, yeah. And it's it's um, a decent song, but it feels a bit without vision at times, I think, is one of the issues I have with this one. And there's another longer song that we're going to talk about where I think it suffers from the similar similar problems. It's just, you, you're listening to it, you're like, well, where's this going? And you kind of, it doesn't really go anywhere. But it's still good to listen to. It's It's got some really good guitar moments in it from Brian May. Um, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. And then we got My Fairy King, which was written by Freddie, and it's set in a fantasy world that he's imagined in his head. Um, which is, I, I think it's really cool. And there's a mentions in it of other Queen songs um, from this album, which I think is really nice. I love it when songs do that. Um... Very unique song, very unique. This is really the song on here where I think Freddie experimented the most. I think because it's got the wackiest backstory, it seems like the best place to experiment with stuff like that as well, I think. So, um, I, 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 I really enjoy it for that aspect. However, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's not one that I go back to much, unfortunately, though. It's just a very interesting listen, but it's not, it's not great. I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. And then we're moving on to Side 2, where it opens up with a track called Liar, which is a pretty popular one among fans, uh, written by Freddie again. And the song starts off very heavy, but then it dies down immediately for a little bit of a slow part with the acoustic and Freddie. But then it steams back up again, and I quite like it that the song does that. Um, when they hit the line Liar, they do not hit it as well. As they hit the line, doing all right. The band do not gel off each other as much. I think they're all trying to go with a raw, kind of mean approach, and it it works. But to me, to my ears, it doesn't sound great, uh, which is one of the problems I have with Queen. Sometimes they all come in together, and it just doesn't sound great to me personally. Even though I know people love it, this is where I'm probably going to get slaughtered. Um, <laughs> so I do apologise uh, to people who love that, and I get it. I really do. It's it's a very unique sound. Um, but again, this song here also seems a bit without vision and empty at times. Um, but again, it is backed up with fantastic vocals. Um, it has great guitar moments. The bass work in this song is really good. Um, I'm going to give it a six. It's not a bad song. It's not. It's just not one of my personal favourites. And then we got The Night Comes Down, written by Brian May. And it's a kind of coming of age song, which is quite interesting. Um, May really, really likes singing about coming of age a lot. Um, he does that on quite a few Queen songs. Um, but he also plays tribute to the Beatles on here uh, by mentioning the song Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which is really nice because 
the Beatles were Queen's biggest inspiration, um, as they were to many other bands of forever since they come about. Um, so it's nice that they paid respects to the Beatles. Um, you know, I think for what the Beatles done for music, I think really every band back then should probably have a little like nod and wink to them in a song at some point. So it's nice that Queen did that um, because, you know, Queen have become one of the most popular bands ever. So it's nice that they can also acknowledge um, other bands like the Beatles and whatnot. So that's that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, and it starts off with beautifully with this some amazing guitar moments and the, the, the acoustics just sound incredible on this song. Absolutely incredible. The production is fantastic. Beautiful vocals again. And it's a real pleasure to listen to this song. I actually really, really enjoy this one. Um, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Um, then we move on to Son and Daughter, which is also written by Brian May. Um, another rocking song. This one picks up again, which I like. The album is structured as a whole really well. Um, we'll go from a fast one to a slower one, and it's it's not just uh, it's not all can, like blobbed together of the same sort of sounding tracks one after the other. Uh, but the guitar riff throughout this one is amazing. It's fantastic. Um, and I do enjoy this song, but this is the one song which kind of wears really thin for me. I, I, I don't know why. Me and this song don't click very well. I all I it's it's not it's not super long, but it's not short either. It's kind of I am ready for it to end about two minutes into it. Because again, you 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 get the vibe that this song's going for, but the vision isn't there again, unfortunately, I don't think, um, to carry the song super far. Um so I'm gonna give it a six. And we got a song called Jesus, which is written by Freddie, and it's all about Jesus. <laughs> of course, Freddie being very religious at the time. It's it's interesting lyrics. I'm not a big fan of religious songs, but probably because I am not religious. <laughs> but nevertheless, it's um it's an interesting song. There's good moments in it. The chorus is good. Um, gets a bit repetitive is the problem, I think. You can predict this song almost exactly when it's gonna go into the chorus and when they're gonna zip back into the verses. Um and it's never good when a song does that, really. I like some twists and turns. Um, and it, it's one of the weaker guitar solos from Brian May on this one. Um, but nevertheless, it's not bad. It's still enjoyable. I'll give it a six. And then we've got the Seven Seas of Raya, which is one of the most famous instrumentals ever, even though it's only like 50 seconds long. It's beautiful. Um, of course, written by Freddie. The piano is just perfect. It's amazing. All the instruments work so well off each other. And I'd love to give this a really high mark. I really would. But it's just so short. I, I can't bring myself to give it a super high mark. So I am going to just give it a 6 out of 10. But I couldn't be harsh. I always say anything above a 5 is good. Anything below is bad. A 5 is average. So I don't think there is a bad song on this album, guys. Even though it might seem like I've been a bit harsh a couple points here. Um, I, I just generally think it's because the this is their first album. Queen went on to do so much more, um, even like just two albums down the line with Sheer Heart Attack and then A Night at the Opera, I have reviewed that, I think I gave it a 7.7, .7. great album, really good, the, the, this is their first album, so I think they're allowed to have some weaker, more empty feeling songs, which they definitely do on this album, nevertheless, this is one of the best debut albums ever. It's fantastic. So anyway, let's take a look at my copy of the vinyl record. Here is the cover, and I absolutely adore this cover. What a fantastic cover. It's just incredible. Um, and then here is the back, which is really nice because it's like a little collage of pictures, which just look really, really cool. And then in a sleeve... Um, it's, I don't know if there was a picture one, this is just the one my copy's got. And this is a reissue, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, it's a very nice condition mine as well, plays really nice. Of course I was playing it this morning, getting preparing myself for this review. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I really, really like the artwork on this album, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. The cover's fantastic, and the back cover is also really good. And of course we can see that absolute badass. Queen logo there at the top, I love it, and it's one of the best logos a band ever had. So yeah, I added up all of the scores, so what is it, 10 songs I think it was, and then the 11th mark for the artwork. So I've added them all up and divided them by 11, and out of 10, Queen's debut album is going to get a 
six. So yes, 6.6 6 for Queen. I think this is a good album, very solid debut album. Um, and yeah, Queen, what a band really, they are fantastic. And what they went on to do after this, it only gets better, it only gets better. Also, if you haven't seen Bohemian Rhapsody, guys, go see it. It's a fantastic film, absolutely incredible. Um, one of my favourite films um, to come out in 2018. If you guys are interested, there is a link in the description to my movie channel. And i done a ranking of my 2018 films, and it done quite well, done quite well. It was in my top 10. Um, I won't say where, I don't want to spoil it, but it's, yeah, it's in there. It's a very, considering I saw 40 films, it's pretty good getting in the top 10, I'd say. Uh, but nevertheless, that is it for this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it, as always. Please hit that subscribe button, like the video, leave a message, and I will see you guys next time for another video. Bye-bye. <laughs>